I remember a couple of years ago having brunch with a girl I was dating. And somehow the topic of marriage came up. And I do find that as I get older, I'm less hardline about most things. It's the same way when you're 16, people tell you, hey, whatever big idea you have you think is so important, when you get older, you're not going to give a shit anymore. And I have bad news for a lot of you kids out there. Most of what people say is going to happen when you get older does in fact happen. So, I don't know. Try to act surprised. So marriage, technically, I'm opposed to it. Realistically, though, I meet the right person, I'm in the right circumstances, the right place in life. Hey, who the fuck knows, man? Who knows what could happen? Never say never. But for whatever reason, that day, when I was discussing with this girl, my 16-year-old version of myself reared its head again and was like, man, forget marriage. Here's why marriage is ridiculous. Here's why, as a concept, it doesn't work. Here's where it came from. Here's where it's just, you know, here's the list. And we argued back and forth for a little bit until she said, well, it doesn't matter, right? I'm not asking you to marry me. And when she said that, it really brought the whole conversation to a total halt because it was true. She wasn't asking me to marry her, I wasn't asking her to marry me. And regardless of what your stance is on marriage and what validity you give it, when you flat out say to the person you're dating, I don't want to marry you, that means something. That means, what are we doing here? Where is this going, you know? And all of a sudden there was a pretty big void between us, a real feeling of distance, where it occurs to you how little time you've actually known this person, how really the only things you the only reason you're there is because you happen to meet this person, you happen to hit it off. And if you're not willing to entertain the thought of trying to make it permanent and serious and lifetime, then it's just fooling around, it's just dating, just having a good time. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it it does take the wind out of the sails of our relationship in some ways. But I'm always surprised when I hear that people I know are getting married or have gotten married. Still seems like a tough decision to make to me. And this episode is a story about getting married and marriage told by a friend of mine. XO number 15. sure where to go back to. I guess I'm going to talk a little bit about how people feel about marriage and, and compatibility. Because I underwent such an incredible change in my life and how I felt about it. Never fit to worry, never even feel a fright. Single sleeps alone, and I 
I really felt for so long that, you know, you find a certain person in college, blah, 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 you get married. Sex isn't really that important. It's not um, essential. It, it is what it is. I didn't even know that you could really have it be that good. Um, not until I really turned 30. Um, really. It, it doesn't even matter to the story so much, I guess. I met somebody in college. Do you close your eyes when you kiss me? He was a French guy, and he was studying abroad to get his master's. Uh, we connected well. We dated for a long time. Uh, we lived together for a couple months before we both left home for the summer. And then when we came back, we were still dating. And then he graduated about three months later. And then we went long distance for a long, long time. And he would come visit me. He ended up getting a job in the States. Part of the reason he got a job in the States was because he wanted to be with me. Well, in the time frame when he got the job in the States, I graduated college and I was looking for a job. And I started looking for a job in Colorado. I'm sorry, in Oregon. And he got really angry because he was like, look, you know, I got a job in the States. He was over on the East Coast. It's like, I got a job in the States because I wanted to be with you. So you need to be closer to where I'm at. really pissed me off because I was like I did not go to college for all these years just to find a job somewhere closer to you it's bullshit and I was ready to break up with him but we had a talk we worked it out So we continued to date long distance for many years, uh, I think probably three or four years, close to it anyway. And through different parts of my job, I lived in St. Louis, then I moved to Georgia, and when I was in Georgia, we, we had some conversations, it was sort of like a shit or get off the pot kind of conversations. It was, well, what are we doing? Because he was, at the time, he had to have moved back to France, and he was in France, and I was in the U.S., and it was like, well, if we're ever going to see each other again, the only way to do so, essentially to be together, is to be married. And I thought, well, I've put all this time into this person, and I really care about this person. 
why why would I throw it all down the drain? Like, I met him in college. He he seems to be the right person for me, and we should just get married then. So we did. We got married. We got married and we didn't know the rules of getting married um, between two countries. And he was like, well, I'll go back to France after we get married, because he just, we got married when he was here on like a three month visa. He's like, well, I'll go back to France and I'll work and I'll make some money while we work for all this paperwork to go through. So I soon discovered, after we filed all the paperwork, I get this um, piece of mail from the government that says, we're working on your case, and we will decide the case in 999 days, or something to that effect. Whatever it worked out to be, it was an astronomical amount of time, and I freaked. I was like, what? What is this? What is this? I have to wait. <laughs> this time he's like, in France, like, what, what's going on? So I called all these lawyers, and I was like, what do I need to do? He, he's my husband. He should be back in this country. Like, how do we make this happen? And they said, well, is he there? And I said, no, he went back to France. And they said, oh, man, ah, oh, jeez, there's nothing you can do. only one thing you can do there's some special visa to get him to come over in the meantime but it can take forever so it was like oh my god what what did we do So I, I, I filed the paperwork for it, and he actually got the documentation for his actual green card to come back into the United States as my husband right before this temporary paperwork went through. Like, the temporary paperwork went through like a month after the actual paperwork went through. So we spent our first year anniversary apart. He was in France, I was in the US.
And then he finally got over. And at the time, I was working for a company that when they promote you, they only promote you by moving you. And so he'd gotten to the country. He was working shit jobs till he could find a good job. He just finally found a good job. And I knew I was right at the moment going to be put in a position to either be promoted and move away or for me to say, no, I'm sorry, I can't move right now. And then you're screwed. You can't go anywhere. You, the, you're stuck. And so I decided to quit and go work somewhere else. We were married for some time. There was a lot of... Mm, what's the word? It was like we were two separate people living in the same place. strangers living in the same place he it was like having a roommate you know we did our laundry separately I don't know. I'm not I'm not much of a person that's like, oh, yeah, I cook. I'm the woman I cook. I, I'm not like that. Um, he liked to cook, too, but he would kind of impose upon me and tell me what to do, and that really bothered me. It sounds so, tr so trite, you know, like, so ridiculous now, but it was one of those things that got under my skin a little bit. He was very much into like home improvement, home improvement shows. That was his life, was just being at home, fixing up the home, and just being very much settled down. Why don't 
point in time just trying to find something and he was like no no I don't want to do any of that it sucks I don't want to do anything like, well there's got to be something you like the only thing that he come up with is badminton he's like I like badminton I was like okay well let's like get a badminton thing for our yard which of course we never did We just grew farther and farther and farther apart. And as I felt more and more and more trapped, because like at that point in time when I had asked him those things, it was really like me flailing at that time. I started to realize what my life was going to become. I was becoming this suburban housewife, the end. You don't understand me. And that was it. That was my life. Being this and nothing more. And I was fighting to not be that. I wasn't fine to just be subservient in this life. And he was a person who, if you tried to speak with him, he would shut down automatically. He, he had no way of communication. And I, I tried several times. Now, I don't try hard enough because I'm not very good at it myself. Usually it has to be kind of pried out of me a little bit. And he was absolutely not the person to pry it out of me. If anything, I should have been prying it out of him. It was bad. It was a bad situation. Because we lived in this stagnant thing where both of us just got angrier and angrier, hated each other more and more. And as we hated each other more and more, I would do things like I would go out, I would get wasted, drunk, I would stay out all night, you know. I'd just be a mess. I would do things I shouldn't do. I was totally lost. And I would feel lost, like I didn't feel like what I was doing was right. I didn't like what I was doing. It was some way of my like inner self to fight and and just push against this. I will promise to myself that I will not become this housewife, the end kind of person. I won't do it. I absolutely won't do it. And part of my fight and my and my going out kicking and screaming was like kind of me trying to give him this wake up call. Just like, are you paying attention yet? Are you listening to me? Do you see what's happening? But I learned fast how to keep my head up cause I know I got this side of me that wants to grab the yoke from the pilot and just Fly the whole mess into the sea And part of his response to it 
wasn't to really confront it directly, but one night we were drinking beers, and, and he was like, I think we should have a baby. And I'm like, what? Have a baby? We can't even... We can barely function as a couple. What are you thinking, you know? He's like, well, I think, I think a baby would be really good for us. And he's like, well, I, you know, I know that uh, you, you drink and you smoke cigarettes, so I don't really think that you could handle nine months of not drinking and smoking cigarettes, so maybe we should adopt. I've been looking into adopting. And I'm like, you know what? If you think that I am not responsible enough to quit drinking and smoking cigarettes for nine months... <laughs> Why would you think I would be a fit mother for anyone? And why do you think that adopting would be the right path for us? I was I was completely shell shocked. I was like, my drinking and smoking how to control was based in so much of the problems of our relationship to begin with. Yeah, how you gonna stop yourself when your man stops ringing your bell? You're right between heaven and hell and you're gonna need the good Lord to help you. Hey. Then his answer to it was for us to have a child and now looking back, it's like I feel so sad about it. It's like he was really like at his last ropes trying to find a way in his way and being unable to speak with me and being unable to be open. Such a little girl like a spinning top mama but she's spinning out of control. It was his way of dialoguing and, and letting me know that stuff was fucked up. It was fucked up, and it was really fucked up at the time. And then I started plotting, I started plotting my way out. And it's, I feel very sad about how I did it, but I started packing things up when he would leave, and I picked a day, and I decided this day, this is going to be the day that I tell him it's not okay and I'm gone. And we had a nice dinner. At the end of the dinner, we were a little sussed, and I just started bringing things up, and I was like, you know... This is a problem for me. He's like, well, this is a problem for me. And I'm like, well, this is a problem for me. Back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. He's like, what are you trying to say? And I'm like, I don't know that I want to be in this anymore. And he kind of blew it off like, whatever. Yeah, right. Someone took your tweet 
He was like, I'm tired, I have to go to bed. And I, I put him to bed and I said, I'm sorry, I have to go. And I kissed him goodnight and I grabbed my bags and I left. And it was the single most painful thing that I've ever done in my whole life. And it still haunts me. It doesn't haunt me because I feel in any way like I should still be with him. It just haunts me from the perspective that I did it so poorly that I never really gave him the honest chance. That even though things were bad and he knew it was bad and I knew it was bad, I just split. I just split. And I wish I could have. I would apologize to him now, even though he would have nothing to do with me, and he has every right to have nothing to do with me. But I would apologize to him for how much I hurt him, because it still hurts me. Because he was a huge part of my life for many, many years. And it's difficult to just up and drop it. And I don't need to be a part of it. I don't, I don't need to be a part of it as part of my own guilty whatever. He deserves to start his own life and I don't want anything to do. I want him to start his own life and be happy and everything in no way. Like, do I ever want to touch his life again because it would only be painful. But I wish if I could have gone back in time that I could have salvaged some of the pain that I caused in my behavior.
and to him I am sorry for that. number 15. For more shows, go to keithcourage.com. Just a bureaucrat that won't get me a mortgage 